وفانا أقبل علينا 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 لنا شعور ربيع وفانا أقبل علينا 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 لنا We'd like everybody to be seated and quiet. We are about to start the program. We promise you, you are going to have a very, an excellent evening with us here tonight because we are here for nothing else but to celebrate the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, inshaAllah. Okay, so I'll give it one more minute for everybody to be seated, complete quiet, and then we'll start the program. My dear brothers and sisters and dear children, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When our first conference in 1993, which we held at the venue in the auditorium of Seneca College in Don Mills, where the hall was so packed, overpacked, I would say, that dozens of people had, could not enter the room, the, the hall, and had to wait outside to go home. On behalf of the President, Brother Nur Hassan Qasim, and the members of the World Islamic Mission Canada, it is my pleasure to welcome and thank you heartily for taking this opportunity to be here in this blessed month of Rabir Awal. Tonight we are celebrating the International Conference of Miladun Nabi Sallallahu and this is our 26th year. فقال الله تبارك وتعالى في شان حبيبه مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمد مع ذل الجود والكرم منبع العلم والحلم والحكم وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم الحمد لله all praises for Allah سبحانه وتعالى for all his favors outwardly and inwardly and we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى and we praise him for the greatest favor that he sent to humanity and to creation his beloved Habib رحمة للعالمين our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم whom he created from a manifestation of his own light, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower peace and blessings upon his beloved Habib, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his pure family, his noble companions, his pure wives, who are the mothers of the believers, and those that follow him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, until the day of judgment. Ameen, ya rahman rahimeen. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبغ له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم آمنت بالله صدق الله العظيم
करता हूँ इलाही मैं तुझ से दुआ मांगता हूँ कहिए करम मांगता हूँ आता मांगता हूँ इलाही मैं तुझ से दुआ मांगता हूँ अता कर तुषान करीबी कसद का अता कर दिशान रहीमी कसद का नमागू गज से तो मागू गकी से नमागू ग तुझ से तो मागू गकी से तेरा हूँ मैं तुझ से दुआ मांगता एवरीबॉडी करम मांगता हूँ अता मांगता हूँ इला मिल के पढ़िए अल्लाह से पना मांग रहे इला ही मैं तुझ से दुआ मांगता हूँ जो मुफलिस है उनको तू दौलत अता कर या जो मुफलिस है उनको तू दौलत अता कर जो बीमार है को सेहत अता कर मरीजों की खातिर शिफा मांगता हूँ कहिए मरीजों की खातिर शिफा मांगता हूँ इलाही मैं तुझ से दुआ मांगता हूँ एवरीबॉडी करम मांगता हूँ अता मांगता हूँ बिल्कुल सबकी हाजिरी लगेगी इलाही मैं तुझ से दुआ मांगता हूँ और जो नादार है कुछ नहीं जिनके पल्ले उन्हें भी दिखा दे हरम के तू जलवे जो नादार है कुछ नहीं जिनके पल्ले के तू जलवे हुजूरी हो सब की दुआ मांगता हूँ कहिए हुजूरी हो सब की दुआ मांगता हूँ इलाही मैं तुझ से दुआ मांगता हूँ 
मिलके कहिए करम मांगता हूँ अता मांगता हूँ इलाही मैं तुझ से मिलके पड़ी इलाही मैं तुझ से इलाही हमेशा दो मसरूर रखना बलाओ से हमको सदा दूर रखना परेशानिया हमको घेरे हुए हैं परेशानिया हमको घेरे हुए हैं परेशानियों से बना मांगता हूँ करम मांगता हूँ अता मांगता हूँ इलाही मैं तुझ से दुआ मांगता हूँ दुआ for honoring us and enlightening our hearts with this blessed hamd and dua in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in one of these couplets he mentioned may, all, may, may we get huzuri and may we all be granted huzuri which is presence which comes from the word in Arabic hadra hadar to be present I remember our Shaykh Al Habib Ahmad Mashur bin Taha Al Haddad, Rahmatullah Ali, he used to say when you go to a gathering of Mawlid, when you go to a gathering of celebrating the Prophet, وسلم, don't just think that you're going to a regular gathering. Say that you're going to the presence of the Prophet. Say that you're going to Hadrat al Nabawi into the presence of Rasulullah. Imam Ali bin Muhammad al Habashi, a great saint. And a wali of Allah from Yemen would say, Ma shi ka majma'il mawlid yujallil kurub. That there's nothing like the gathering of Milad and Mawlid al Sharif sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to remove the difficulties and the calamities. And there's nothing like the blessed gathering of Milad Sharif for you to be given forgiveness and maghfirah and for your darajat to be elevated and your ranks to be elevated. And if you don't believe me, then ask Abu Lahab. If you don't believe what I'm saying, if you don't believe what the Ahli are saying, ask Abu Lahab. For indeed there is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. And we all know that Abu Lahab is cursed. Abu Lahab is in hellfire. Tabbat yada bi Lahabin wa tab. We read the surah, we memorize the surah. Him and his wife, for the enmity they show to Islam and the enmity they show to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes their punishment. But when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born, Abu Lahab had a slave girl. And when that slave girl told Abu Lahab that you have a nephew that was just came into this world, Muhammad the son of Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, out of happiness he took his two fingers and he made a sign to his slave girl that you are free, I free you. Out of happiness. Now in the Hadith Sharif it mentions that Abu Lahab is experiencing the worst type of punishment in hellfire. But on that day of Monday, because it was the day of Monday where the Prophet ﷺ was born. Because out of happiness that he showed for the birth of Rasulullah with those two fingers, he is given a cold drink of water to drink from those two fingers. I'm saying if this is the hal of Abu Lahab, imagine we are here, we are mu'mineen, we believe 
in Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we are happy and we are showing happiness at the birth of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam imagine what we can receive Alhamdulillah <laughs> celebrating Eid Milad and Nabi, the birth of the Holy Prophet with you here in Toronto. Alhamdulillah, this is a beautiful gathering. This is a blessed gathering, a gathering where the angels are recording your presence, a gathering where your wishes, your desires is being heard. That every moment that you spend in this gathering, you're being blessed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showering sawab and blessings upon you. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whoever sends blessings upon Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah sends blessings upon them. And we all gathered here to send blessings upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there is no doubt that Allah Himself, our Lord, our God, is sending blessings upon each and every one of us. When I arrived with Hazrat Sahab, we stay at the home of Brother Abdul Ahad, who has been hosting Hazrat Sahab as well as Qadi al Sunnat, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Alayhi, and his wife, my sister. Ever since the World Islam Mission was founded. And when I arrived the next morning, we were praying Fajr. And Hazrat Sahab said to their son Abdul Basit, who's Standing there, Abdul Basit come forward so people can see. Please look at this Nurani face of Abdul Basit. He's a young man who is 21 in his final year, and he's a Hafiz, Hafiz of Quran. He reads beautifully. He's the role model for other young people. He's humble, he's full, his heart is full of beauty. And Hazrat Sahab said to Abdul Basit, lead the prayer. He went forward to lead the prayer. This is the Masallah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Hazrat Sahib asked him to lead the prayer and it was a really beautiful moment. And he went forward and I saw the love of Hazrat Sahib on this young man. He led the prayer and Hazrat Sahib was praying behind him. He became the Imam. His own father, Brother Abdul Had, was praying behind him. He was the Imam. We were all praying behind him. We accepted him as our Imam. And he recited a surah which I'm going to recite in front of you, and I'll make that as a topic. And I want to make the topic, the love that Hazrat Sahib showed to this young man. I want to share that. What does that mean through the ayat that he recited in his prayer, when he was leading the prayer? So the love that Hazrat Sahib shown 
and the ayat that Abdul Basit recited, I want to share the meaning of that with you, and that will be my topic for today. And I dedicate this through my love for Abdul Basit, I dedicate this topic, my speech to you. Abdul Basit, we accepted you as an Imam, you are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always keep you as our Imam. You are a future leader. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through you illuminate our society, our world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, protect you, watch over you. The ayat that he recited was Billahi min shaitani rajim bismillahi rahman rahim. Is Qala Yusuf al Abihi ya abti inni raitu ahada ashara kaukabum was shamsa wal kamara. Raituhum li sajidin. Qala ya bunaya la taksus roya kala ikhwatika. Faya kidu laka kaida. Inna shaitan lil insani adubum mubin. Is Qala Yusuf al Abihi ya abti. When Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam said to his father, O oh my father, Ya Abati, inni ra'aytu ahada ashara kawkabaw, that I have seen, I have dreamt, 11 stars. Is qala Yusuf alayhi, Ya Abati, inni ra'aytu ahada ashara kawkabaw, wa shamsa wal qamara, and the moon, and the sun, that they were bowing down to me. The father says, Oh my son, don't tell this story to your brothers. I'm afraid they might harm you, they might do something. Inna shaitana lil insane mabin that shaitan is the biggest, the worst enemy of human beings. This is a story that most of us have grown up with. This is a story when our parents used to tell us, our teachers used to tell us, a story that I'm sure all of us would be familiar with. The story of Hazrat Yusuf and his father and his brothers and what they did to him. But I want to explain the meaning of this story through the love of Hazrat Sahabu, showed that love to Abdul Basit. What does it mean for us in the context of Eid Miladun Nabi? The blessings and mercy that Rasulullah sallallahu came with. Is qala Yusuf al ya abti. When Hazrat Yusuf al-Islam says to his father, Ya abti, O oh my father. Just imagine the respect that he's giving to his father. The love that he's showing to his father. Is qala Yusuf al ya abti. Oh my father, oh my father. And this is what the Holy Quran is recording. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. That this is how he said it. That oh my father, imagine the love, the respect that he's showing to his own father. Ya abati, inni ra'aytu ahada ashara kawkabaw wa shamsa wal qamara. That I saw 11 stars, the sun and the moon. Ra'aytuhum li sajideen. Bang down to me. His father didn't say, I don't have time for you. His father didn't say, what kind, what kind of dream is this? How dare you come and you come with some nonsensical dream? You're telling me that you dreamt the 11 stars and the sun and the moon bound down to you? His father didn't say that. He didn't shrug him off. He didn't tell him off. Imagine if your son says, 
Oh my father, oh my mother, I saw the 11 stars and the sun and moon bound down to me. Would you pay him attention or her attention? Or would you just laugh it over and say, yeah, of course he did. How would you react? If not that particular story, any other dream that your son or your daughter comes to you and says, Oh my mother, oh my father, this is the dream I saw. Would you give the time? The father says, Ya Bunaya, oh my son, my beloved son. Ya Bunaya, oh my son. He's listening to the dream. He's listening to the story. He's paid attention. He hasn't shrugged him off. He hasn't said, go away. I don't have time for these kind of stories. He didn't say, I don't want to hear this. He listened to the story. He listened to his son. And he said, Ya Bunaya. In the same way he gave respect to his son. Oh my son. Ya Bunaya. Don't tell this story to your brothers. The love of the father and son, just, just imagine the love. The beauty, the bond, the special relationship. Oh my father, oh my son. The father is giving time, the father is respecting the child. The father is listening to his dream. The father is taking him seriously. The father is treating him like an adult. And then the father says, Oh my beloved son, don't tell this story to your brothers. The father is fearful. He's not hiding the fact that his brothers are not nice people. He's not hiding. He's telling him. He's communicating with him. You know how many of us talk to our children, communicate about the problems in our homes? How many of us talk about the uncles who may not be very good influence, who may be alcoholics, who may be drug addicts, who may be doing some nasty things, and we seem to be hiding. We seem to cover all that that is going on. A lot of the abuses is not just Harvey Weinstein in terms of what he's done. A lot of the abuses happens in homes, in our homes, in the safety of our homes, within our families. And how many of us hide those things rather than talking to our child and warning them and alerting them? You know, the psychologists say that you need to talk to your children, make them resilient. You mustn't hide things from them. If there's an anger problem, talk to them. If you have an anger problem, talk to your child. Don't hide it. Here the father loves his son. He doesn't hide the fact that his brothers are going to harm him. He tells him and he warns him that don't tell this story to your brothers because your brothers will harm you. Your brothers have bad intentions. Your brothers are not in a good place. Your brothers may do something. This is the love of the father and son. The mercy of the father towards his son. He's communicating. He's talking to his son. He's spending time with his son. You know, one of the most precious commodities in this world, in this society now, is time. We seem to have got caught in the rat race where well, we don't have time for each other, for our families, for our children. That we seem to be running after all those things that are worldly, but we don't seem to have time for the most precious things which are our children, our families. 
The Holy Quran says, Al-Hakmu Takathur Hatta Zurtumul Maqabir. Al-Hakmu Takathur Hatta Zurtumul Maqabir. Competition for worldly success has distracted you. The rat race has blinded you. That you're caught up in wanting more and more. A better home, a better car. That's not a bad thing, but you are so caught up, so immersed, that you are neglecting the very priorities that you're here for on this world, which is to guide your family, to support your family, to support your child, to make sure that you're there for your children, that you're neglecting them, that we see in our homes that parents don't have time for their children. They're rushing to work, they're rushing here, they're rushing there, and their child is growing up without any time being spent by their father or, in many cases, by their mother. Al-Hakum al the greed and the desires, the competition for worldly success has blinded you, has distracted you. Hatta zurtumul maqabir until you come to your graves. Until you come to your graves. Kullo nafsin zayqatul maut. A life is short on this planet. A life is short. It only seems yesterday that these children, Abdul Basit, was this high, and now he's as tall or even taller than, than me. It's only yesterday that he was being driven by his parents. Now he was driving me yesterday to a program at Oakville Town. Time passes very quickly. But we seem to be so immersed in worldly affairs that the very precious thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, the gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has rewarded us, the most beautiful gift of human life that Allah has given us, which is sacred, that Allah has entrusted upon us, that we, should, we seem to be neglecting, that we're not thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the blessings that He has given us, that we seem to be neglecting the very blessing that Allah has given us. How many of us spend time with our children, give time, to our wives, to our husbands. What kind of family are we creating? What kind of life are we creating? قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّا لَا تَقْسُسْ رُؤْيَاكَ عَلَيْ قُوَتِكَ فَيَكِيدُ لَكَ كَيْدَ Don't tell this story to your brothers. I fear that they will do something. I fear for your life. I fear. Talk to your children. Talk to them. Alert them. Children are resilient, make them resilient. Don't hide things away from them. If there are abuses going on, tell them, talk to them. If there are people who are bad, talk to them, tell them, communicate with them. You know, the children who are growing up now, whether they're called the millennial children or generation Z or generation Y. These children have different pressures than we had, than their parents had. Gone were the days when you sat around the fire in the villages and the families told stories to children. These days, forget stories, the child may be in the room, the father may be in the room, the mother may be in the room, and they may not be talking to each other. They may be talking to the rest of the world through their WhatsApp and text, but they're not talking to their own family. They're not talking. You see children who are not growing up to be emotionally intelligent, which is the most important education that parents can give. So they don't become the abusers of tomorrow. So that they don't degrade people. That they become emotionally intelligent so they respect each other. 
that they're sensitive to people, that they have humanity, that they have soul. That's the most beautiful education that you can give to your children. But that doesn't seem to be happening. You see children with all the pressures in the society we live in. The pressure that we have in this society is the instant society. The society where everything people want right now here. People wanted the instant gratification. Because this is what they see on television. This is what they see everywhere. That if she can have it, why can't I? If he can have it, why can't I? This is the world where it teaches you that you can have everything. It puts a lot of pressure on the children. On, if you look at women and men, in terms of the way they look, or the way they should look, the way society is expecting them to look, the way they should behave, the way should they should act. Maybe not the right way that society is teaching, but they have pressure, and you see children at very, very young age facing depression, facing mental illness, because there's no one talking to them, no one communicating with them. People are sitting around the table, but they're communicating to the rest of the world, to their friends, but not to the very precious gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, that we have been rewarded with, which is the gift of family. Ya Bunayya! Oh my son,